Hey everybody, this is David from Flash by Bicycle Nut. Just uh, got home yesterday with my next project bike, the Suzuki GSX-8S. Uh, and also, uh, the new GSX-8R is going to be built on this platform. So, uh, two series of bikes that I think will be uh, using the same parameters in the ECU. So, this will be real helpful. I uh, haven't really had a chance to ride it. The weather's pretty shitty. I uh, hope it looks like it might dry out a bit. I hate to take a new, brand new bike out in the rain. Uh, worst case scenario today Saturday. Worst case scenario Monday through Thursday. It looks chilly but dry. So I'll get those break in miles done so then I can start uh, on the dyno. Uh, really excited. I really like the looks of the bike. Uh, Suzuki's done a great job. The display is freaking really, really quite nice. Uh, nice and bright, easy to use, intuitive. Um, I like the looks of everything being blacked out. Uh, the only really eyesore I see is like on every bike is the uh, rear fender. So look at who makes some tail tidies for that and uh, go with that. Um, I have an arrow exhaust ordered already for it. So that will be the first full system that I'm testing with it after I develop my flash for the stock bike. Love the fact that it's fly by wire. We got the quick shifter auto blipper there. One of the things I did notice, uh, I run GP shift on all my bikes and uh, I'm going to have to stick with Standard shift on this bike, unless somebody comes out with a tricky dicky shifter piece or rear sets so that we can flip it and keep the quick shifter auto blipper working because there's going to be no way to flip the knuckle here and no way at the bottom to move the lever to the other side of the pivot because it will hit the clutch case right there. Uh, really anxious to get some miles on it. As you can see, I also own an MT-07 uh, that I've been doing some testing and dyno work with. So uh, I'll make some videos directly comparing the two of them. My MT-07 is a 2019, so it's not completely fair, but it will be pretty damn close. Uh, so I'm going to do a uh, ECU deep dive for you guys so we can look at the settings and what I'll be adjusting when I do the flash. So let's do a deep dive into the ECU. Uh, pretty simple ECU for a fly-by-wire bike. Uh, this is the main Woolock screen. And you can see we have the different boxes. We have advanced setting, other maps, ignition maps, fuel maps. Uh, these are the main sections we'll be going to for tuning. There's some other stuff that I, tools that I use for tuning, but they're not exact, they're not settings. They're like data viewer, auto tune, diagnostic, engine data, uh, right ECU settings, config. There's stuff that I set but um, and use tools, but not something that we really need to go over as far as settings. Let's take a look at what we have under advanced settings. These are all just check boxes, so they're either on or off, not really adjustable. We have dis disable O2 sensor uh, fuel injection code. This is so we can unplug the O2 sensor. If you feel like this is a bad idea then and we need the O2 sensor for compensation, then I have another video you really should watch. It, um, it's under my live video. It's the only live video I've ever done. It talks about why we disable the O2 sensor. The setting to disable the fuel cut. Fuel cut um, when you, you close the throttle all the way, the fuel injector shut off. When you go to roll back on the throttle, you have to turn on. It gives a little bit of a delay and smooths out the throttle a little bit. In my opinion, fuel kit gets a lot of blame and a lot of credit for what it doesn't really deserve. If I set up the ECU fueled properly or the bike fueled properly and set you out to feel the difference between fuel cut on and off, it's not really major, but you, you can tell the difference. There's a disabled front wheel speed sensor. Uh, we would use this on the dyno so that I'm not constantly getting check engine lights. I could also use this if you're a stunter and we like the wheelie all the time and you don't want your bike to have constantly have codes for the front wheel to stop spinning, we can disable that. Disable pair uh, fuel injection code. This is so we can block off the pair valve and unplug the solenoid and not get a check engine light. It's not the same thing as trying to force the valve close. And then we have the disable EVAP fault codes. If a bike has an EVAP, I can disable the code that you will get if you remove the EVAP. I haven't looked on my bike. I didn't see an EVAP, but um, on my 49 state bike, it doesn't look like there's an EVAP. But if you did, we can disable the code. Section we're going to look at is ignition maps, and this is the ignition map editor. You can see we have groups one, two, and three, which I'm assuming will be modes A, B, and C, and then it's also by cylinder. We can look at the ignition timing based across the top is off the throttle position, and top, and top to bottom is is the RPM, and we can adjust them in in the lower RPMs every 200 RPMs, and it looks like all the way up uh, they go to 400 RPMs in the larger area. These numbers look conservative to me, uh, so I will be able to go through and massage them, uh, especially 100% throttle as the easy one. We can adjust them based off of power, and as they get smaller, uh, for the smaller throttle openings, I adjust them based off of throttle response and also power sometimes because now with a fly-by-wire bike, 
I can go in and limit the throttle to certain areas and check the ignition timing to see if I can get some gains uh, in the middle areas and see if we can optimize them. So this table will go through all the way and uh, we'll set it optimal in all three modes if that's this, what we're looking for. The next table we're going to look at is the ETV tables. These are under other maps, and this is really the only tables under other maps that I'm going to be working with, I think. Uh, there is a set of tables labeled ETV limit, which would limit how much throttle we can get, but I don't believe they're true when I look at the dyno runs that I've seen online. So we're going to initially just start with these ETV tables. And the ET electronic throttle valve is the fly-by-wire table. So this tells us how much throttle we get. If we look across the top, this is how far we got our wrist turned. If we look on the side, that is the RPM. So if we look at the table and at 40 800 rpms if we have our throttle turn our wrist turned 100 we actually get 100 throttle if we're down at 4400 rpms we only get 85.7 and you think well you might think well let's just make all those 100 and that's not necessarily true we can get to 100 to throttle too fast and that can actually hurt power these look pretty good um, in the large throttle openings but some of the throttle smaller throttle openings I don't think there's enough difference between the three modes. I haven't ridden the bike yet, so that may not work out to be true. But I think I'll be able to massage these um, through the different modes to get a much more different feel than the stock modes have. Um, I'm guessing A looks still pretty conservative, that it's still going to be really soft. Um, but anyway, I'll play with these to get the feel that I want for each mode. I'll make sure that the throttle opens as fast as it should for maximum power, and obviously make sure there's no restrictions. And this will be set... Just like they are now, you'll have three modes. May A mode will be your most aggressive and C mode will be your least aggressive. The last tables that we're going to look at are the fueling tables. And when people think about tuning a motorcycle, this is what they think about, right? The fueling tables. Again, this ECU is not a super complicated one, but there is still more to adjust than just fueling. Fueling is tables are divided into two tables. You can see it in the upper left-hand corner. You can see IAP and TPS. And IAP is a pressure map. This is the map that the bike uses when you're at steady state cruising small throttle openings we're more on the iap table as we get to larger throttle openings and higher rpms the bike switches over more to the tps table so we have to adjust both so what separates my flash from almost all of my competitors is mostly how i adjust this iap map that we're on a lot the IAP map, I do most of my adjustments through street riding, data logging in real world conditions, not dyno tuning. Dyno tuning is great for large throttle openings, not for small throttle openings or steady state tuning. So by using the dyno, my using my data logging and riding the bike in real world conditions, it allows me to precisely tune these throttle maps. This is where you get that nice smooth throttle response, the nice on and off throttle response, the nice fuel mileage because when I'm by data logging them, it allows me to precisely tune these tables, not just push them in the direction that you think they need to be based off the looking at it on the dyno. So it's really one of the big tables that separates my flash from most of my competitors. The TPS table, we'll adjust that also on the road. And then we'll do the larger throttle openings, 100% throttle and, and over 50% throttle. We'll, we'll use the dyno for most of those. So this is... Um, this ECU, the tables that we'll be adjusting to get the most out of it. I don't expect huge gains on the stock bike, but you never know. Um, we'll keep, we'll get a baseline run going in a couple days, and then I'll start tuning and we'll see where we're at. Uh, obviously, as we start modifying intakes and exhausts, then these tables, especially the fueling tables, become more and more important to adjust so that our bike is safe and healthy and runs the way we want it to. We spend all that money on an exhaust. We want it to run the way we that we, we want it to run right, right? So that's what we, we you guys pay me for. Uh, first exhaust I will be testing, like I said, is the Arrow, but I will be making a whole database like I do with all the bikes that I develop flashes for. Um, this is why I buy the bike and not just rely on customers bringing me the bike to tune. So thanks for watching, guys, and uh, remember to hit that subscribe and like button for more motorcycle-related content. Take care.